What's the matter? What's the matter? You think you got cheated? No, but I make a mistake on this Mendoza cattle deal. Paul skinned me alive. Hey, that's not a bad idea, skin you alive. You know, we'd have a rug for the living room, one for the upstairs bedroom, the hallway. Very way. funny. We... <laughs> Give me the first one. The sea bag. we a fine journey, lad. Pleased to have made your acquaintance, you might say. Aye, sir. Good luck to you. Hey, Andy. Got a meal in there for the cart rats? Well, I ain't sure, horse. Let me go through the pouch. There uh, won't be any letter from Adam, if that's what you're looking for. What well, makes you so sure, mister? Obviously, you must be little Joe. And you must be Hoss. My name's Gilly Maples. I'm pleased to meet you. Gilly Maples? Gilly Maples! Oh, Gilly Maples! You're on the boat with Adam, ain't you? I was. Uh, only they call it a ship. Hey, Adam rose about the time you pulled him out of the water and saved his life. Oh, well, uh, that wasn't anything. That burn Paul's gonna bust wide open when he hears you're in town. Yeah, well, now, look, I, I've already got a room reserved. You haven't got a room. Oh, no, you've got no, a room at the Ponderosa, and that's it. Come on, no, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no
Oh, of course, of course. Adam wrote me about you. Well, welcome to the Ponderosa. How's oh, my son? See, so you met Gilly. I sure did. Hey, you saw the surprise, huh? Yeah, what a surprise. Hey, Wonderful put your bag surprise. up in Adam's room. Oh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, Hop Singh's getting you some dinner ready. Hey, well, come on. We'll go upstairs yeah, and get my bag. Wait, wait, wait. Enough is enough now. You... It's one thing to shower hospitality in our guests. It's another thing to drown them in it. <laughs> <laughs> now, which is it going to be? Food or rest? Well, oh, that, uh, that food sounds mighty tempting. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's have some food. Hop Singh. Fix the table. We got a very special to have here. Here I go. No, no, no. Hop Singh, we're about out of food, looks like. I fixed plenty more. You want a family. You got appetite just like Mr. Adam. Oh, nothing more for me, thanks. I'm afraid if I'd have another bite, I'd weigh more than this chair could take. You don't have to worry about that. We've had them all reinforced for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Gilly, I didn't want to interrupt while you were eating, but I wonder... Adam's fine, Mr. Cartwright. Never better. Good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Did he uh, say anything about visiting at any time? No, sir, I don't think so. He had hoped to be in San Francisco long enough to get home for a few days, but, uh, well, when he heard about the ship pulling out for the South Seas, I, uh, I guess that was a chance he just couldn't pass up. Yeah, well, I don't blame him. First Hawaii, and then the whaling grounds, I figure. Adam thinks that the whale herds are being thinned out too fast, that uh, something's going to have to take the place of whale oil. Thinks maybe copra's the thing. Well, it sounds like Adam, all right. Adam always had a lot of ideas on board, too. <laughs> I like the sails. The sails? And he told the first mate that they could get more speed out of the longboats if they rigged the sails a different way. Well, now, this mate, he wasn't too happy about someone telling him how to rig the sails. No, I don't imagine he would. <laughs> well, the point is that... Adam was right. No, no, he was dead wrong. The boat capsized the first time they tried it. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Every time Adam talked about all of you, he'd smile. I'm beginning to understand why now. Gilly, I uh, can't offer you any room. I know you prefer that, but uh, how about some brandy? Aye, aye, sir. Oh, right to that. Right to that. <laughs> <laughs> Back in those days, a, a herd of whales would, uh, would extend as, oh, as far as the horizon. It wasn't a question of could you take the whales, it was a question of which one first. <laughs> Ah, uh, New Bedford was the center of the world, man. That's changed, huh? Well, nowadays you gotta look long and hard, Mr. Cartwright. You know, Pa, speaking of hers, when's that Mendoza cattle supposed to arrive? I clean forgot to tell you, fellas. One of Mendoza's advance riders came by today. That herd's been delayed two weeks on the trail up from Mexico. Adam showed me the letter that you wrote to him about all that. Oh, yeah. That must be quite a thing to set up all the way from Mexico. <laughs> Well, this deal took six months to set up. You know, Paul, that, that delay could help us. It'll give us a little more time to round up that gold. The gold? Yeah. Yeah, Mendoza doesn't have too much faith in government, so he wants everything in pure gold. Yeah, Mr. Cartwright, I, uh, I hope you don't mind Adam showing me your letters. No, of course not. Why should I mind? Well, it's just that uh, I, I never had what you could call a, a proper family. And, uh, well, reading letters like yours, I, I sort of adopted you in my mind. Sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, doesn't sound silly at all. Matter of fact, I'm kind of glad that Adam adopted you as a friend. Somebody can swim and pull him out of the drink. <laughs> Adam would have done the same thing, Mr. Cartwright. Well, of course he would, but that doesn't change our feeling toward you. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> to my son, Adam. I gave each of the boys one of these money clips. Well, you remember you were talking about feeling. Well, Adam felt the same way as you. That's why he gave me that right after I pulled him out of the water. I'm glad he did. Only I can't keep it, Mr. Cartwright. Well, why not? Because it was meant to be his. Well, he wanted you to have it. He gave it to you. No, sir, I just can't. No, he wouldn't take it back. But I'm asking you, as a favor, to take it. You, you keep it for him. Sure. 
Well, now I better be getting back to town. Well, you mind if I borrow one of your horses? Oh, no, no, of course not. But the, the... Thanks a lot. All of you. Well, clearly there's no necessity to go back to town. We have plenty of room. No, sir, Mr. Stay... Cartwright. It just wouldn't work. Thanks a lot. Well, you're welcome here, buddy. Well, help him saddle up one of the horses. unhappy mayor there unless you put a saddle blanket on first. Gilly? You're a seafaring fellow. You know, on board ship, everything's done a, a certain way. That's the way it is out here. You just don't turn down a man's invite unless you have a good reason. Have you got a good reason? I told you I don't want to be in the way. I've told you that you're not in the way. If that's your reason. No, no, Mr. Cartwright, that's not the reason. People like me, we just... We just don't fit in. Especially not around a place like this. A place with a family. Oh, come on now, Gilly. Mr. Cartwright, I've had the wrong shoe on the wrong foot for just as long as I can remember. Other fellas, they, they, they dream about uh, running away to sea. Me, I was a cabin boy at eight. And I hated it. Some of the other fellas on board, uh, like Adam, they'd stand at the rail for hours, just staring out over the horizon. But the ocean only made me feel lonely because there aren't any markers on the ocean. And I'm a man who needs markers. Well, you know what, uh... what are you going to do? The sea's the only thing you know. I'll find something. Yeah, but what do you want? I want to have me a place. A place. Somewhere I can look at and say, this is where Gilly Maples belongs. I want a plot of ground when I go. Not just to be tossed over the side in six feet of sailcloth. Well, you know, young fellow, you sound just like the kind of kind of man we need around here. Now, heaven knows there's plenty of land. All we need is a, a man to work it. And uh, you'll, you'll get the know-how. I will. One way or another. First thing you're going to have to learn is not to put a saddle on backwards. <laughs> Young man, I'm trying to give you a chance to learn these things. Now, I'm not doing it out of the goodness of my own heart or because you're a friend of Adam's. I want you to be a friend of mine, too. Before you leave here, I want you to find that place that you want so badly. Now, let me have my own way in this. Let me be selfish about it. Huh? <laughs> Attaboy. Now, you get yourself inside. We'll see if he can outfit you in some of Adam's old clothes. Get you some land clothes to go with those land legs of yours. Mr. Carrot, I just I don't know get how... inside now, didn't I? <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't let any guest of mine take a saddle off his own horse. Frontwards or backwards. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. 
Well, I'm aboard, Gilly. This is the same horse I tried to saddle last night, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same one. Why? He didn't look so big then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Gilly. Horses are a lot stronger and a lot bigger than men, but they ain't got something you got. You got brains, they ain't. Listen, if I had any brains, I don't think I'd be doing this at all. Well, uh, it's first time for everything. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Now you got to face the end with the head on it. <laughs> Try again. There you go. All right. Oh. How am I doing so far? I think you're a natural-born rider. Well, at riding, I don't know, but sitting there in that saddle, you're doing a real good job. Good. Uh, go on, give her a little kick. She'll start. Oh, I don't want to hurt her. Oh, Gilly, you ain't going to hurt her. Can't talk them out of it, old girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here we go. Hey, come on, relax, Gilly. She's not going to bite you. Don't give her any ideas. Loosen up your rein, Gilly. I, I think I've had enough. You've got a lot to learn yet, Gilly. You're just getting started. Stay with it. Hey, I, I, I mean it. I think I've had enough. How do, how do you stop this thing? Stop. Slow up, at least. Give me a stopper, please. Before. Never. Well, look, Gilly, as soon as you get used to the horse. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's not that. It's for the first time in my life, after all those years on the sea, here I'm a, a thousand miles from the nearest ocean. I think I'm going to be seasick. Joe, just fine now. Thanks. Here I am. No, I reckon that's sort of a bad suggestion, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it's the thought that counts. Well, uh, what's next? Aside from riding a horse, that is. Oh, well, I'm sure we got a... We got a terrific stream not too far from the house. Trout about that size. We could have a good oh, time. No, no, no. I mean, what's next in the way of work? Gilly, you're our guest. We don't want you running around doing chores and such. No, sit down, relax. I'm a guest. All right, yeah, relax a little bit. Well, so I'm a guest, huh? Bring me something to eat. Yeah, what's that? No, 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 no. I don't mean anything like that. Bring me uh, a roast like we had last night. What? That takes up saying a half a day or so, Gilly, to fix something like that. Yeah, you, you just don't whip that thing up in a minute, you know. No. Well, that doesn't matter to me. I haven't got a schedule to keep. After all, I'm a guest. You know, Gilly, <laughs> I think we just changed our mind about the whole thing while we've been sitting here <laughs> talking. <laughs> well, if I can't be a slave, I want to be a master. You got a deal. Hello, slave. Yeah, I'm happy to break you back. <laughs> well, how's this for starters? I'm going to go in town to livery stable. I got some stuff to bring in there. Well, well, come along. That sounds just fine. How about you? Still a sandwich, ain't they? You answered my question. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Joe, there's, uh, there's just one thing. Yeah. The next time you want to be nice to a whaler, don't invite him to go fishing. <laughs> you got a point. Gilly, you got a point. <laughs> sure.
sure he's open? I don't see anyone around. Yeah, he's open. He's probably, probably out having lunch or something. Well, you mean he just leaves it like that, the door's wide open? Well, Dave Scissors, there's only one thing a blacksmith's got worth stealing. There's not too many folks around strong enough to lift an anvil. <laughs> well, you sure wouldn't find that kind of thinking on a ship. Hey, you gotta watch your belongings every minute, or... Well, what? Well, they're liable to get stolen. Hey, let me give you a hand with that. Uh, don't worry about it. We got three more of them in the wagon. Hey, first thing you better do is go over and talk to that fellow in a gray suit across the street. That's Mr. Bannerman. He's a clerk at the hotel. You gotta cancel that reservation of yours. He'll have his books messed up for a month. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. Sure thing, friend. Uh, what can I do for you? I uh, wonder if you could give me some information. Well, I'll try. But if it's uh, work clothes you're looking for, well, I'd say go down to the mercantile. They got good quality with a pretty fair price. Thanks a lot. Being a stranger in town, I just didn't know. No trouble at all, friend. No trouble at all. Straightened out? Yeah. Wasn't mad about you canceling the reservation, was he? No, no, not a bit. Lucy B. Master Ben Cartwright. <laughs> you know where I got this logbook? No. From John Williams? Does he still have his uh, ship's chandlery in New Bedford? He does. Yeah. But his sons help him run it now. Yeah, I bet they do. Yeah. See? I was right. Eight days out of New Bedford when that black squall hit. Gilly, I'll tell you, it was like... It was like doomsday all at once. Two masts snapped like matchsticks. Two? Two of them. When that wind came up, What's the matter? Excuse me. What for? <laughs> well, here I am talking to a fellow who wants to leave the sea, and what do I talk about? The sea. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Cartwright. I don't mind. Well, just the same. You'll find that the sea and this part of the country are very much alike. They demand the same things of a man. That's what I told Adam this morning. You told Adam? Yeah, I wrote him a letter. I told him about you visiting us. Well, I wish I could be here to read his answer. Oh, you will be? Good. Mr. Cartwright, uh, I'm afraid I can only stay long enough to see that big Mexican herd get in. And I don't think Adam's reply can get here by then. Oh, of course it can. I've got the letter on this morning stage which means it can catch the past packet to Hawaii. Oh, Adam's reply and... the herd from Mexico should be arriving at just about the same time. Talk to you. It's important. You don't have the brains of an oyster. This is the last place we should be seen. Morgan, I had to. Something's come up. Village. Whatever it is, can't be that important. Morgan, we can't go through with it. 
Say it again, lad. I surely didn't hear you proper. Cartwright sent a letter to his boy this morning. He thinks that the answer will get here before the herd arrives. Go on. Go. Well, Morgan, they'll know. <laughs> and what'll they do? You've committed no crime. And if the letter arrives after the herd, we'll have the gold and be gone. It's simple. Everything's simple to you. I wish I could feel that way. You used to. What changed your feelings? Look, when you got that letter out of Cartwright's sea bag, well, I thought, like you, that it was a, a good chance to get some easy money. It still is, lad. Since then, I've gotten to know these people. Would you like to call it off, then? Would you be willing to consider it, Morgan? I'd sooner give up my eyes, lad. Look at you. You got the guts of a barnacle and the spine of a jellyfish. Now look, lad. I've helped you. I taught you things, didn't I? All sorts of things. Yes. I took you as a runny nose snip of a cabin boy. And I showed you what it was to be a man. Didn't I? Yes. Taught you the currents that can run deep in a man, that can spew forth like the struck wheels, boiling black blood. Yes. Well, my boy, none of the things I taught you, none of them, are more important than this. You and I, we travel no more with a bait fish, lad. We move alone, like sharks. You'll trust me on this, won't you, Gilly? Yeah, you're looking real pretty. How you doing, Gilly? Okay. Starting to look real good on that horse. Thanks, but I'm uh, not in your class yet. Well, things take time. We'll have you riding with the best of them before you know it. I'd hate to think about all the things I'd have to learn about ships in the sea. Oh, well, that's not so. I, I could teach you what you'd have to know in no time. Uh, we both got things we could learn. You, you want to learn about sailing and such? Well, not, not to be a regular sailor, but you know, I get letters from Adam. He talks about things he's seen, places he's gone. A lot different than a Ponderosa. Different, yeah. It is that. Depends upon what a man wants for himself, doesn't it? Yep. If you don't want a sick horse on your hands, you better get him in a barn and get him rubbed down. Like you say, I got a lot to learn. Come on. I'm not going to leave you, don't you worry. We've been together too long. Saints cooking gets better all the time, don't it? Sure well, does. you didn't like it before, huh? Well, it was tolerable, just tolerable. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you something. Yeah, Hop Saints been outdoing himself ever since Gilly got here. Well, in that case, Gilly, my thanks. How about a game of checkers? Uh, no thanks. I was thinking about heading upstairs to bed. Oh, what's the matter, Gilly? Eat too much? <laughs> no. I'm just a little tired, that's all. Well, what about you, big brother? How about a whooping? Yeah, let's see about that woman. Good night. Good night, Gilly. Good night. Good night, Gilly. I like that young fella. Has either one of you noticed that he bears a certain resemblance to... Adam? Is that what you're going to say, Paul? As a matter of fact, yes, I was about to say that. Hey, you know, Hoss and I were talking about that the other day. We think there's quite a resemblance. They got one thing in common. He takes off by himself every time he's got a thought or a notion he can't shake loose from. 
Well, I'm glad you both noticed it. I begin to think my imagination was running a little wild. I wonder why he was so quiet at supper tonight. Yeah, he was quiet, wasn't he? You know, here he is, a young man who's never had a home, never had the permanency of a family. He suddenly finds himself among people who, who like him and accept him. And he begins to think that one day pretty soon he's going to have to leave all this. And I guess that would uh, quiet a man down thinking that, if that's what he was thinking. So it's no mystery to me. Why are we so good? No. And I don't know man that wants to kill either. You're a bonny beauty, aren't you? Come here. I should go downstairs. Why? Aren't I treating you with respect? Like a proper gentleman? It's not that, Mr. Morgan. It's that I've got a job to keep. Job? You listen to me, my girl. I'm no ordinary sea scum. I'm going to be rich. Do you know what it's like to be rich? No, sir. It's like nothing you've ever known. Gentlemen tip their hats to you in the street. And servants jump when you bark at them. And the ladies? Oh, the ladies, they smile sweetly at you and they say, no, sir. And yes, sir. Really, Mr. Morgan, I'll get fired if I don't go back to the saloon. You aren't going anywhere till I give the word. Be gone here, wherever the devil you may be. Morgan, it's me. Blast your eyes, lad, you've come at a bad time. I had to see you. She brought me a bottle from below. Here you are, lass. Keep the change. Bless you for your kindness. Stole a little of that rum in your bilge, lad. Tell me your news. When Dolce's herd arrives in the morning, by heaven, it's done. Our luck runs ripe, lad. When do they get the gold? In the morning, early. As soon as the bank opens. How will it be guarded? From the bank by uh, three ranch hands, Mr. Cartwright, and me. No good, no good. Too many people. At the ranch house, what happens then? He'll put the gold in the safe until the Spaniard arrives. How many guards then? Most of the men will be busy with the herd. Aye. That's it! We'll strike then like two sharks on a weary swimmer. <laughs> Pour us a drink, lad. We'll drink to our fortune and our glorious future. Well, we go when it's done. Have you ever known the Caribbean, lad? Yes. Hot nights, rum sweeter than any you ever put your tongue to. And bonny girls with a hot sun in their limbs. Oh, it's a musical land. To fair weather and a running sea. Gilly. 
was just reading before turning in. Thought I heard a horse ride in. That was me, Mr. Cartwright. I, I couldn't sleep. I thought a ride might cool my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, funny. What you been to see? You're on land. It's hard to get to sleep at nights. You, you, you miss the feel of the sea. You know? <laughs> The creaking of the ropes at night. <laughs> and, 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 and the roll of the ship and the wind. <laughs> and the flapping of the sails. <laughs> yeah, once you've been to see it, it never leaves you. It's always part of you. And ships, uh, you know, they're like women you've loved. You feel bad about leaving the sea? No. No. Life is... Life has been good to me here at the Ponderosa. Yes. You do have a good life here. Yes, we do. And I'm glad you're sharing it with us. Well, probably get to bed. We got a big day tomorrow. Aye, sir. Good night, Gilly. Good night, sir. sure you don't want me to get your coffee. Oh, come on, Bobby. You'll have to go to Carson City to do that. That's a lot of money. Well, that's going to buy a lot of cattle. Now, stop worrying, will you? I got four guns besides myself. All right, boys, let's move out. Right. Then you better get over to the cattle dipping report the horse there, huh? Yes, sir. And uh, tell little Joe to have Senor Mendoza come by as soon as they start dipping the cattle. I'll do that. You sure you don't want one of us to stay on guard here, just in case? Oh, no. Gilly and I will take care of things. We'll be all right. Oh, uh, uh, Hop Singh set the chuck wagon up in Wilson's drawer. Stop off there if you're hungry. Right. <sighs> Let's get that gold inside and open her up. Well, why do that? I think Senor Mendoza will want to see what he's getting. <laughs> But doesn't he trust you? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if he trusts himself. <laughs> Help you? No, I can manage. Uh, hey, this. <laughs> Gilly? A lot of cattle, right? Uh, look, you don't need me here. Why don't I uh, put my horse away? Now stand up, slow and easy. All right, now, drop your gun belt. Come on, come on, come on. All right, now kick it over here. 
Kill, if you want this gun back, you better come and get it. Get over there. Go on. Go on! Please. I don't want to have to use this gun on you. Do you think you could use it, Gilly? I assure you, sir, he'll use it. He's a good boy, my Gilly. He'll do what I tell him. Who's this, Gilly? A man who wants to see you open that safe. Gilly, who's this man? Never mind who I am. No, wait. Leave him be. I know the combination. So this was your plan, Gilly? Shut up! You know, Gilly, being as you know the combination, we don't need Cartwright no more. Gilly, do you hear, lad? Morgan, will you shut up? I gotta concentrate on these numbers. How much longer is it gonna take you? Not much longer. What? Not much longer. Just a few seconds. There it shines, lad. There it shines. You know what you've got to do now, Gilly? Yes, I know. Hurry, lad. Look, I'll fire a shot into the air and then you can escape. It won't work, Gilly. We'll get over what you're doing to us with the gold, but you'll never get over what you're doing to yourself, Gilly. I've got to go through with it, don't you see that? Better take all of the gold. Boys, I uh, want you to have that. Their way of saying, I'd like to have you stay. What's the matter with you, Gilly? Have I got to do this for you? Morgan, no! You keep out of this! You made a mistake, Cartwright. Those boys of yours won't even recognize you by the time this gets through with you.
Billy Maples is still on board that ship with Adam. See, Morgan and the young fellow we knew as Gilly Maples were shipmates of Adam's. They heard him talking about the cattle and the gold. And, well, it was Morgan's idea. He stole Adam's money clip from the real Gilly Maples. And, well, you know the rest. Geez, he fit in so well. It's hard to believe he was an imposter. Yeah. Sure is, isn't it? I prefer to believe he wasn't an imposter. I think I prefer to believe that the two Gilly Maples, the one that saved Adam's life at sea, and the one that saved my life. Let's get home. <laughs> 